Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about properties of exponents and I'm going to move pretty quickly through here so um, feel free to pause at any point in time and and try to uh, you know write stuff down and then get the video going as you uh, as you catch up with me okay so we have a bunch of rules here like what do I see seven different rules um, and some of these things you already know and some of them you don't but there's really just a couple of big ones that we need to memorize probably the top three uh, the top four are the biggest ones uh, you know what all seven are important what am I talking about okay the big idea is this. Um, let's say that, first of all, I want you to understand that I have the letter A in both locations in this. This is called the product of powers property, okay? If I have the same base, okay, raised to a power, and I want to combine those together. So say, for instance, that I have 2 raised to the third power times 2 raised to the fifth power. So you'll notice that the same base, it's 2 both times, but they have different exponents. They could have the same exponents. It really doesn't matter. The rule is this, all I have to do, see, if I understand that that's really 2 times 2 times 2, that's a shorthand way of writing it, and if I understand that 2 to the 5th is 5 2's multiplied together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, if I understand that that's really what I'm saying, this is just a shorthand way of stating it, then I can count and see easily that there are 8 zeros up here. Well, how do I get 8 out of 3 and 5? I add them together, right? And so the rule is this, if I ever take two things with the same base and I multiply them together, I just add their exponents. So m plus n is what goes in the blank here, okay? 2 to the third times 2 to the fifth is 2 to the eighth power. I don't have to count all those out or write it out longhand. The, the flip side of that, okay, and this is the, these two are the big ones to remember, I think. In my opinion, these are the ones you see more often than anything else, okay? When do I add and when do I not add, okay? This time we have a base raised to a power, and then the whole thing is raised to another power. So what if I had two squared, and I raised it to the third power? Well, I see a two and a three here, and so the question is, is it two plus three, is it two to the fifth? Okay, and what you have to understand is really what it's saying is first I'm gonna square the two, and then I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna multiply it by itself three different times. In other words, I'm doing two squared times two squared times 2 squared. That's the second example here, okay? And I can see here that if I understand that that's 2 times 2, there's two twos in here, and there's two twos in here, that's 2, 4, 6 total twos, right? So it's not 2, pl time, or two plus 3, it's 2 times 3. And the big idea to remember is this. The thing, the thing I always try to teach my students is this. The only time you multiply exponents together. See here, we're up here in the top rule, we're adding them, just adding m and n together. We're adding 3 and 5. The only time you multiply is when you're raising a power to a power, which is why it's called the power of a power property. So when I raise a power to a power, I multiply. A couple other rules to point out, okay, that these are smaller rules, but still worth knowing. First of all, if I have two things multiplied together, that maybe that's like 2 times 3 raised to the fourth power, something like this. Okay, I could do this a couple of ways if I had the numbers. See, the problem is we're going to be doing it with letters here in a minute. You see that, right? Okay, but if I have things multiplied together and they're all raised to the same power, okay, rather than say 2 times 3 is 6 and that's 6 to the 4th, I could distribute out the exponent to each thing inside the parentheses. So in other words, I could say that that's 2 to the 4th times 3 to the 4th, if that makes sense. I could give the 4 to both the 2 and the 3 because they're both raised to a power. Okay, notice there's no addition here. If I'm doing something like 2 plus 3 to the fourth power, this rule does not apply, okay? So that is not a good addition. See, that, that would be, if I had like letters involved, that would, be, um, that would be a FOIL problem instead. If there was like x plus 2 or something, okay? x plus 2 to the fourth, we've talked about that a lot. That would not, that'd be a FOIL problem. That's going to be a long, terrible, absolutely awful multiplication problem. But whenever we have multiplication signs in the middle, if it's 2 times 3, we can just distribute it out. So A and B both get raised to the n power. Okay, here's the next important rule. If I have a negative, a negative exponent, all I have to do is make a fraction. And whatever I had goes on the opposite part of the fraction. So if it was on the top of the fraction here, right now it would be like over 1. I can write it on the bottom of the fraction instead and flip the sign of the exponent. It doesn't change this value. If that was a 2, it stays a 2. And if this is a negative 4, it just becomes a positive 4. So the exponent changes signs, not the value, not the base here. Okay? They have this little thing off to the side because they're saying a can't be 0. In other words, 
if I'm going to put it on the bottom of a fraction, I can't divide by zero. So that would be an issue I'd want to watch out for. Um, but we'll, we usually don't run into that in our type of problems. Um, the next one you probably already know, anything raised to the zero power is one, as long as that number is not zero, because zero raised to a power would be zero. The next one is this. This kind of goes along with the product of powers. Okay, product is multiplication, here's division of powers. So these two are kind of related, these two guys right here. And all it says is if you had something like this, let's say that we had two to the fifth power divided by two to the second power, okay? Same base both times, but we have different exponents perhaps, okay? If you understand that that means two times two times two times two times two on the top, and two times two on the bottom, okay? If you understand that that's what two to the fifth and two squared mean, Okay, then you might understand then that two of these will go away as such, right? Okay, oops, I hope I'm still recording, okay? Two of these will go away. And so what that means is that I'm left with three twos, which I could say is two cubed, okay? That's my shorthand way, whoops, say, of writing that. So how do I get a three out of a five and a two? I subtract them, right? So if I have a power on top and a power on bottom, I just take the one on bottom and I subtract it from the one on top. Okay, this would also, um, the, you might see how this rule here and this rule work together, right? Because I could flip the n to the top power and make it a negative n, right? And so then it's addition of this rule, okay? Last thing here, you know, I have two things inside the parentheses and I can distribute out the m. Well, I can do the same thing here. I can say that this is a to the m over b to the m, okay? So there's your basic seven rules. Um, and let's see what it looks like here. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and finish out a few examples. And I know this is a long video now, but, but this, let's make sure that we understand this at least well enough that we can come to class and do some, of the, some problems like this. So let's simplify these four expressions. This one here, I see that eight, x to the 8 over x cubed. That means I have 8x's on top and 3x's on bottom. And coming up here to this property right here, I know then that all I have to do is take 8 minus 3, and that means that I would be left with x to the fifth. In other words, if I have eight x's on top and three on bottom, three of the x's are going to go away from the top. That would leave me five from the top, right? More x's on top. How many more? Five x's more. Over here, okay? This one, um, this is interesting. I, I see a power raised to a power, okay? But before I even go that far, I see that four is raised to the zero power. And anything raised to the zero power is really one. So that goes away, and I'm really left with w squared left raised to the negative fifth power. And this is the important rule, ready? Anytime I raise a power to a power, I multiply. That's the only time that you will multiply these together. So what is two times negative five? It's negative 10. That's w to the negative 10th power. And in every single one of our problems, what we're going to do is we're going to write everything with a positive exponent. And how do I do that? How do I switch this negative 10 to a positive 10? That comes back to this rule here, where I flip it and I put it on the bottom of the fraction then. So it's 1 over w to the positive 10th instead. Over here. I see powers raised to powers, and I see a bunch of things. It looks like what I'm going to do then is I'm going to distribute the negative 2 out to everything. Okay, So I have 7 to the negative second power. I have c. Now look, I have a power raised to a power here. So 7th power raised to the negative 2 power, power raised to a power, I multiply. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. And d is squared, but then raised to the negative 2 power, so that gives me d to the negative 4th because I'm multiplying. Now, all of these have negative exponents, so I'm going to write them all on the bottom of the fraction with a positive exponent. There's nothing remaining on the top, so I'm just going to put a 1 up there as a placeholder. And there's my expression. Last one here, okay. Uh, first, before I get going, I notice that I have q to the zero power, so why even bother with that? That's just the number one. Let's get rid of it completely. Numbers-wise, I see 16 divided by 4, and I know that that's 4, okay? I'm going to go ahead and write a fraction bar because I bet we end up with one, a fraction in our answer. So I'm going to take care of the numbers first. As far as the q's go, I got rid of one of the q's. Here's a q with a negative 3 exponent. So what I'm going to do now, and this is, the only, this is the first time we've seen this, I'm going to flip it to the top of the fraction and make it a positive 3. And then I have these R's to deal with. And see, here's the thing about these R's. They both have negative exponents. So really what's going to happen, I'm going to do some work off to the side real quick. The R to the negative 7 is going to go to the top and become an R to the positive 7. The R to the negative 6 is going to go to the bottom and be R to the 6th. 
And if I look at it this way, now I can see that I have seven R's on top and six on bottom. So that's a subtraction problem. It looks like whenever those all said and done, I'm gonna have one remaining R on the top of the fraction. So it's gonna look like this. So no fraction bar, it turns out. Everything's in the top of the fraction. So I'll just make that part of my box. That would be four cubed R. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, we'll do some work on it in class. And that's the first video. We've already done scientific notation together in class. Okay, so I'll let you, I'm not gonna make a video for that one. I'll make a video for these two problems here in just a minute so you have some notes to follow.